Here in this holy moment is a song that is so precious to us. And it's a song that describes the communion that we have with the Lord because of what He did for us and because of His sacrifice. When we gather together as the church or just in a living room or family room with our friends and family, and we worship Him and truly seek Him, He's there among us. His Spirit is there and His glory is present. And there are those moments that sometimes we just don't know what else to say except for holy, holy, holy. He is so worthy and we choose to express our worship to Him in that way. That's the way that all of heaven is worshiping Him right now. And in those precious moments, we join with heaven to just call Him holy. Yeah, man, I remember the night that we wrote this song. Um, it was really, it was like, 10, 11 o'clock at night when we started it. And I just was showing you the melody of the chorus as an idea that I had. And then from there, it was almost like we experienced a holy moment with the Lord and the whole song just kind of wrote itself within like an hour after that. I, I picked up my guitar and we kind of just played through it. And uh, it was just incredible how the Lord met us. And like you said, this song has been very special to us. Um, not for the song's sake, but because of what it describes and the moments that it accompanies. You know, we, um, we love songs, we love corporate worship, we love uh, hearing the church sing, uh, but at the end of the day, when those moments of praise usher in an awareness of His glory um, that is so heavy that all of that, the, the program comes to an end, the plans come to an end, and we are just sitting and receiving um, and experiencing the weight of who God is. Um, those are the moments that we live for. And, um, uh, you know, a scripture that has really marked us and defined um, what for us is the sound of worship that um, we have prayed to um, unlock from the mouth of the church uh, comes from Revelation 14. Um, this is verse two and it says, I heard a voice from heaven like the roar of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps and they were singing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the elders. And so he's talking about a voice, but then he says they were singing and so it's it's one voice but it's they so it's plural many people um, and if you go on to read it's it's the redeemed it's the voice of the church and um, and it says that that heavenly sound is like the roar of many waters and you know I I remember years ago I had the opportunity to go to um, Victoria Falls in Zambia. It's the largest waterfall in the world by, um, not, not by height, but by the amount of water that comes over the falls. And it is so, first of all, it's so powerful that the steam that rises up from this waterfall, you see it as you're flying in on the plane. But when you go up and you're standing in front of it, you cannot hear a single thing that's being said around you. Uh, and it's so powerful that the steam that's rising from that, it's almost like it's torrentially raining because it's pelting you in the face. And the Bible says that the power of the worship that comes out of the mouth of the redeemed in heaven is like, it, it has that much power to it. It's like the sound of many waters. And it's similar and, and you know, both of us, we've been in meetings before where um, we get to those holy moments where the glory of God comes in, the song's over, the plans are over, we're, we're off the beaten road and all of a sudden the church begins to open up their mouth and everyone finds their song and their sound. And that sound that breaks forth from moments like that sounds like the roar of a waterfall. It's just this collision of people's praise and people's worship and that is you know, when we talk about releasing the sound of heaven on the earth, that's what that sound ultimately is. And so um, as, as this song, you know, is focusing in and talking about these holy moments, um, it was a prayer of both of ours that we would have a moment like that um, on this record 
um, that captures a piece of that sound, of that sound of mighty waters from heaven. And I remember talking about it and we're like, okay, well, how are we gonna do this? There's, you know, this is a studio project and um, we had about six people come in and record background vocals on the project. And, and so we just decided, you know what? We're gonna take a moment in the studio and we're gonna just um, turn on the mics. We're gonna focus on the presence of the Lord. I remember I read some scripture and we prayed and we just had a moment of worship not, not because we wanted to achieve anything, but because we wanted this album to be marked with that sound of heaven. And that ultimately turned into the last track on this album, which is this reprise track. Yeah, which is the track, it just says, you're holy, you're holy, the train of your robe fills the temple. And it's in those moments, those holy moments where there's kind of these waves of glory and it's like this reflection of heaven, the calling out, the creatures calling out and the elders saying, holy, holy and repeating back. And God is just endlessly worthy of our praise. And when we have those holy moments, you know, it can't be manufactured. There's no brand, there's no style, there's no personal preference. It is just God's people raising their voice, whether it's singing out, crying out, praying in the spirit, um, praying for one another, just responding in worship to who God is. It's those moments that we live for with the Lord. And that's our prayer for this album, is that it would help release those moments inside of you, um, inside of your church. Um, and we just pray that God's glory is just made known through this album and in his church and that there are many, many more of those moments to come. Amen.